Now that you know the importance of having a management program, what strategies are effective in preventing and controlling the disease? In Winnipeg and Regina, a multifaceted program is employed. It involves insect and disease monitoring and insect control and sanitation and tree maintenance and planting of alternate tree species. This program has been successful. And if Alberta is infected with the fungus, similar action will be taken. Control measures are already being employed in an effort to prevent the possible onslaught. The single most important way that the disease can be controlled or prevented is through minimization of the beetle breeding sites. In Alberta, Stop Dead monitors for the presence of elm bark beetles from May to September. The group hangs sticky traps with pheromone lures from poles and trees other than elms to attract the beetles. These traps are scanned and changed regularly to record elm bark beetle populations. Potential breeding sites are also eliminated through the clearing away of any elm dead wood. Elm trees that aren't infected can pose a threat if they have 40% or more dead wood. Such trees are classified as hazard trees because of their capacity for producing large numbers of beetles. Hazard trees are removed, then burned or buried at designated sites. The wood may also be chipped, rendering it useless for elm bark beetle habitation or the growth of the fungus. The chips must be less than three inches long. To prevent dead wood from reaching the 40% maximum, healthy elm trees are pruned regularly. This is only done during the fall and winter when elm bark beetles are inactive. Otherwise, wounds will attract these carriers, greatly increasing the chance of a tree becoming infected. Stored firewood also provides a sanctuary for bark beetles. Many of the worst neighborhood outbreaks of Dutch elm disease can be traced back to one pile of elm firewood. As long as there's still bark on the wood, it's an attractive breeding site. And regardless of whether the original tree died of Dutch elm disease, this wood may contribute to an outbreak which can quickly become uncontainable. Elm firewood is identified by looking at the cross-section of the outer bark. Brown and beige layers indicate elm. The biggest threat of introducing the disease to Alberta is through the transport of elm firewood from outside of the province. For this reason, it's illegal to store or to transport elm wood without a permit, unless you're taking it to an approved disposal site. Bins are provided for travelers when entering the province and in major centers. Owners are required to properly dispose of elm wood, whether on personal property or in vehicles. If this isn't done, fines can be levied by forestry personnel. Spread of the disease can be limited by varying the species of trees placed along boulevards. Basswood and green ash are two disease-resistant species currently being planted. Despite all attempts to control the disease, it'll continue to threaten our surviving elms. However, current research is providing more information about the disease and its spread. For a number of years, the universities of Alberta, Manitoba, and Toronto have been studying the disease. Investigations into strains of the Dutch elm disease fungus, inoculations to initiate an elm's response to resist Dutch elm disease, improved preventative and therapeutic treatments, and development of resistant elm tree varieties are some of the ongoing research activities. Newer elm species such as the Jacan and the Liberty elm are reportedly more resistant to the fungus. Unfortunately, these American developed varieties may not be the solution in places such as Alberta. The prairie winters may prove too harsh for these trees and they can still serve as hosts for the beetle. Finding a way to effectively control the Dutch elm disease pathogen has been hampered by an inadequate understanding of the key components in the interaction between the disease and its elm tree host. Dr. Hubies and his research team at the University of Toronto have been working to overcome this problem. Their investigations involve the identification of specific disease compounds by which the host tree recognizes the disease and mobilizes its defense reaction accordingly. 
These compounds are known as elicitors, and the team has been able to isolate them biochemically. Dr. Hubies and his scientists have made considerable progress, and field tests have recorded some very encouraging results. Although more work is needed to perfect the system, it's only a matter of time now before the ultimate goal of controlling Dutch elm disease is achieved. In the meantime, it will take both government and individual efforts to maintain control. So what can you do? Well, there's a number of things that can help. If you're a homeowner, locate the elm trees around your property and take steps to maintain them in good health. Prune dead wood during the winter time between October 1st and March 31st because that's when the beetles are inactive. Always be on the lookout for the symptoms of Dutch elm disease and if you notice any signs, contact your local environment agency immediately. Collect all dead elm wood and dispose of it immediately at the proper sites. Don't store or sell elm firewood and don't transport it unless you're taking it to the dump. Spread the word. Share information with neighbors and friends about the disease and its symptoms. Support elm conservation programs like Stop Dead and get involved as a volunteer or through donations. Help is always required to inventory the trees in communities. This process is a good method for monitoring elm stock and allows for quick identification of possible infestation. The key to controlling the disease in your community is to spend the money now or you will spend a lot later and have nothing to show for it. The fight to save our beautiful elm trees must continue. We've managed to prevent the disease from entering Alberta so far, but the threat is always present. The best way to prevent Dutch elm disease is through participation and education. We have the tools, and now we need to use them to preserve the last stand. <laughs>